Today, President Biden announcing an ambitious goal. He wants half of all vehicles sold in 2030 to be emission free. He held an event with industry execs today to discuss it, but there was one notable absentee. The U.S. trade deficit jumped to a record high in June. What's behind it? And the world's second most valuable blockchain, Ethereum, gets a major update. We look at what it means. That and much more. Coming up in Entity Business. Good evening. Great to have you with us. I'm Paul Graney. Fewer Americans filed new jobless claims last week as the U.S. job market continues to recover. Initial claims for state unemployment benefits fell to 385,000. And the number of people continuing to receive benefits also dropped to its lowest level since the pandemic. One economist says from the jobless claims number, together with other data like flights and restaurant bookings, it appears for now the economy is still well on the path to recovery. But others say stimulus from the government and central bank are artificially propping things up. There are also worries about the new variant of the virus. And despite today's positive job news, the job market recovery still has a long way to go. The U.S. is still 6.8 million jobs short of where it was in February 2020. Labor Department will release its July jobs report tomorrow. And the U.S. trade deficit in goods and services rose to 6.7% in June. That's a record high of almost $76 billion. We've never imported more products in a single month. Over $280 billion worth, up 2% since May. But the laws of economics, when your country runs a trade deficit, is becoming less wealthy. And so far this year, the deficit is up over 46% compared to the same period last year. The goods deficit with China, the largest the United States runs with any country, rose 5.8% in June alone. Some analysts expect the trade deficit to narrow in coming months. They think the U.S. will export more to countries once they recover more. And maybe U.S. demand for foreign goods will wane as stimulus and savings are spent up. Others, though, worry that the U.S. economy isn't as competitive as it was in the past due to business regulations and generous social programs that keep people out of the workforce. And in other news today, President Biden wants at least half of all cars sold in the U.S. to be emission-free by 2030. He held a special event at the White House just a few moments ago with executives from most of the major manufacturers, except one. And the discount Fredrickson looks at what happened. President Biden signed an executive order Thursday establishing the goal of making half of all new vehicles sold in 2030 zero-emissions vehicles and to develop long-term fuel efficiency and emission standards. He wants to strengthen American leadership in clean cars. A future of the automobile industry that is electric, battery electric, plug-in hybrid electric, fuel cell electric, it's electric and, and uh, there's no turning back. The question is whether we'll lead or fall behind in the race for the future. He was accompanied by executives from General Motors, Ford and Stellantis, formerly Fiat Chrysler. All three companies support Biden's goal, adding that it can only be achieved through the electrification policies in Biden's Build Back Better plan. The White House earlier released a statement saying the U.S. market share of electric vehicle sales is only one third that of the Chinese electric vehicle market. Biden wants the U.S. to lead. It's quite ambitious, but I think we have to have goals. Um, And sort of setting low standards is not the way to get to these goals. That being said, uh, we are going to need a significant amount of critical materials. Penny Althaus, CEO of USA Rare Earth, says a big problem is that the U.S. has no domestically produced and processed rare earth minerals, critical parts of electric vehicles. He says the U.S. needs domestic production to reach the goal. Uh, We're way too early to talk about uh, competition in this space. I think it's going to be at least a decade or two before uh, we have enough materials for the entire U.S. supply chain, let alone uh, supplying countries like uh, Germany, Japan, Korea, etc. Meanwhile, one automaker was noticeably absent from Biden's event. Tesla. Tesla currently commands the majority of America's EV sector, and the Model 3 was recently dubbed the most American car in the country. Elon Musk tweeted, yeah, seems pretty odd that Tesla wasn't invited. When Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg was asked why, he responded, 
Uh, I'm not sure, but... Uh... Colin Fredrickson, NTD News. And you can now use Yelp to check which businesses ask for proof of vaccination. The review website just added new filtering options today. So now when searching on Yelp, you can select from proof of vaccination required and all staff fully vaccinated. And for businesses that activate the features, Yelp will monitor their pages for reviews that criticize their stance on enforcing virus measures. Yelp says businesses can also activate masks required and staff wears masks attributes on their pages as safety guidelines evolve. And soon New York City businesses will have to start turning away customers who are not vaccinated. The mayor is planning to roll out a vaccine passport system next month. And Phil Zoe visited some small businesses there to see how they feel about the news. Many of New York City's indoor businesses will start turning away unvaccinated customers in just two weeks. But around 40 percent of the city's population is unvaccinated, according to the New York Department of Health. That's over three million people who won't get basic services at places like a restaurant or the gym. I don't really think it's going to affect it that much because I think that most of the people who wanted to return to in-person classes were vaccinated. That's my impression. Katz Bowen owns the Harlem Yoga Studio. She's glad there is a mandate now. In some ways, we feel relieved by the mandate because so much kind of mixed messages coming from the city about what's okay to do and what's not okay to do that it kind of gives us some guidelines that we're happy to have. Another small business owner had a different take. They're all saying the same thing. It's going to be rough, rough, rough. Philip says he had problems asking people to sign for temperature checks, let alone vaccine cards now. Just for signing, I mean, I had a big problem. And now asking for the like ID, vaccine ID, which is like, in my opinion, a lot of people won't even show it. They will tell you, I have it, I can show it, I know for sure, for fact. I spoke to a lot of people. A customer says there could be better options. Wearing masks is easier to handle than telling people that they have to get vaccinated. It's hard because it's, you know, it's somebody's body, so it's hard to, you know, tell somebody what they have to do with their body. But, yeah, I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> I don't know. But the cafe manager has a prediction. Look, Monday. It's going to be the last nail on the coffin for a lot of businesses. The best one is going to get worse in a lot of businesses. You're going to see it in September, October, a lot of businesses closing down. He says most businesses make their money over the holiday season. If the vaccination mandate goes through in New York City, you can say bye-bye to many of your favorite small businesses. Phil Zhou, NTD News, New York. New York's governor today announced an upgraded pass called the Excelsior Pass Plus. It's supposed to combine the original statewide pass with a larger global smart card system in hopes New Yorkers can use the pass in other states, maybe even other countries. On Wall Street today, stocks rose, notching more record highs for the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. S&P 500 added 26 points or six-tenths of percent. NASDAQ rose 115 points, eight-tenths of percent. The Dow rose 272 points, also eight-tenths of a percent today. An outdoor grill maker Weber debuted on the New York Stock Exchange today. Its shares rose nearly 18 percent. That gives the company a market cap of nearly $5 billion, cashing in on the growing popularity of barbecuing at home. At $14 per share, Weber raised about $250 million in its IPO. Weber's founder invented the Weber kettle, a dome-shaped charcoal grill, about 70 years ago. Now its product lineup includes gas, electric, and charcoal grills. In the U.S., that has a 23% market share. The company's revenue jumped 62% year-on-year in the six months ending March, as more people opt for an outdoor lifestyle. New York City is exploring applying blockchain technology to its land records and wants to use the technology to detect fraud and, and uh, detect and reduce fraud. The city's Department of Finance will partner up with technology firm Medici Land Governance. The project aims to use blockchain or decentralized digital ledger to record property documents to ensure that the data is transparent and unchangeable. Medici says the project could prove the potential for broader use of blockchain in New York City. And the world's second largest blockchain by market cap, Ethereum, just released a major new update today. They call it a fork in the crypto world. 
Among other things, Ethereum is the most actively used platform for building decentralized finance applications. These apps can replace middlemen like banks and custodians for traditional finance functions, and it's a growing space. As Kent Barton, the head of R&D at crypto exchange Shapeshift, is also the founder of Ethereum Denver. I asked him, what does the latest fork mean for the network? So, uh, Paul, it was kind of really for, for two reasons. One was uh, to fix or improve a, a user experience that wasn't great. You know, like, like many early stage technologies, using Ethereum, yeah, it's certainly doable and it's becoming easier over time. Uh, but one, one nagging problem was it was just difficult to, um, to uh, pay transaction fees. You know, almost you have to use a, uh, like pay a toll essentially to use the network. It was hard to determine what that toll was. So thanks to this change, everyday users will find it much easier to determine uh, what, what that fee or toll is. And uh, th- that's going to make a big difference in terms of uh, just the, the user experience or what we call the UX. Um, the other one actually is, is separate. It's related but separate. Um, and it has to do with the, the quote, monetary policy. Um, you know, much like Bitcoin or the U.S. dollar, uh, Ether is a, a monetary instrument as well. Uh, ETH is, is money. Um, however, uh, you know, we want to keep it uh, or, or we want to um, not duplicate what central banks have done by having a, a big inflationary curve. So the other part of this is it burns those fees that the users are, are um, paying without getting too technical. But over time, it will actually make Ether a deflationary asset, which is uh, very desirable from the standpoint of not um, recreating the mistakes of all the, uh, the central banks. Are we seeing any more traditional players in the finance space or other industries who are starting to find uses and become a kind of um, a hybrid player almost? Uh, you're seeing that kind of, it, it, I think, at every level. Uh, you know, one, one example it is the European Central Bank. They were experimenting with issuing loans on the Ethereum blockchain because, uh, you know, the, the Ethereum blockchain is really cr- uh, credibly neutral. Nobody uh, no single party or group of uh, actors can influence what happens. So even at the very high levels, you have that. Um, you're starting to see signs of, of gaming companies getting involved. One, one really big thing in terms of, uh, of adoption is Reddit. It has adopted a uh, Ethereum-based scaling solution where they're going to, um, you know, if you're ever on Reddit, they, they have uh, points and rewards and things like that. Um, there's a lot of advantages to tokenizing those things. And it turns out Ethereum is is perfectly suited to do that. Uh, So that was pretty interesting news to come out uh, in in recent weeks. Kent Barton, Shapeshift. And Kwai Show Technology is the newest target in China's tech crackdown. So far, it's already cost the industry trillions of dollars. One expert says we shouldn't count on those stocks recovering anytime soon. He told entities Evelyn Lee why that is. Kuaishou technology just fell to a record low. The post-listing lockup on sales of its shares just expired, and investors dumped their stocks. It shows their fear of the Chinese online crackdown. The stock is now down more than 20% from its listing price. And this is part of a much bigger trillion-dollar crackdown on tech companies in China. Experts say this shows that the regime has no problem sacrificing investor interests to achieve its public priorities. Anders Kors says that Xi Jinping isn't thinking about second- and third-order effects that could include a decoupling from the U.S. And now investors are skittish. So they're looking at for signals from uh, state media sources, um, any the smallest of investigations by the government. They're predicting that that could wipe out billions of dollars. China commentator Ren Yi says that companies and investors are behind the curve when it comes to anticipating regulations in China. So when state media criticized video platforms for their vulgar content, investors of the largest video and live streaming firms like Kuaishou reacted. Kors says that Xi is making an attempt to expand China's influence and impose certain principles on his own society at the same time. But as a communist regime, it isn't guided by the best economic thinking. The larger Politburo beneath are uh, providing him with economic analysis that is probably faulty because it is focused on trying to please him and trying to cater to his uh, preconceptions and biases. 
Core thinks that big investors will be unwinding their investments. That's because the West is becoming increasingly aware of his more aggressive and predatory approach. And indeed, Cathie Wood's ARK Invest was rapidly shedding its Chinese stocks amid the crackdown. Aggressive, even predatory approach of China is only increasing. So he says it's not going to change anytime soon. Evelyn Lee, NTD News. And Cuba is facing new U.S. sanctions. The penalties follow a series of anti-communist protests that sparked last month, driven by a struggling economy and discontent over the failings of the long-ruling Communist Party. One expert says the protests could speed up the pace of reform in the country. And the Italian Richards has the details. Protests broke out in Cuba on July 11th amid shortages of food, medicine, and a lack of civic liberty. Havana soon cracked down on protesters. In response, President Joe Biden imposed new sanctions on Cuban police and military, branding the communist-run country a failed state. House Republican Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy dropped by a rally in Florida Wednesday, calling for freedom in Cuba. Mr. President, this is not about COVID. This is about communism. This is not a moment, this is a movement. And we will not stop until we have freedom for Cuba. The country is currently struggling with a surge in COVID-19 cases. That's on top of new U.S. sanctions aimed at its foreign revenues, plus a half-century-long embargo. An economist described the July protests as having both positive and negative effects. The positive elements are all measures that the Cuban state have carried out to provide oxygen for the economy. But this time there have been negative elements, a hope that had been expected with the Biden administration. He said the unrest signals what Cuban citizens have to do to improve their economy without waiting for the United States. There are a series of issues which have provided even more of a paralysis to the Biden administration, which has not been fast in changing things in reference to Cuba. Since the protests, Havana has promised to legalize small and medium-sized businesses. For the first time, residents are free to sell used and new goods from garages and porches. The move comes among other minor tweaks to the state-dominated economy. I'm allowed to pay in installments. That's good because I can't pay for it completely. You have to pay for electricity, water, things in the house. Cuba's economy fell by more than 10 percent in 2020 and by another 2 percent in the first half of this year. The government also admitted it was in dire need of help as a surge of virus infections driven by the Delta variant threatens to overwhelm its health system. Still to come this evening. IKEA wants a limited number of customers to take home the smell of its stores. It's promoting its loyalty program's 10 year anniversary. And a pet store owner in Tokyo drums up business during the Olympics by showcasing some very unique pet outfits. That and more after this short break. Secure, the true solution for your digital privacy and security. Secure is a private and secure messaging and email solution hosted in Switzerland using military-grade encryption and Swiss privacy laws, giving you true privacy. Secure is 100% private and does not collect or sell any of your personal data. Secure's Helix technology connects you securely to our Swiss servers without the need of a VPN, guaranteeing privacy and security for all your communications. Secure Messenger doesn't require your phone number or any personal data that hackers target. Chat by Invites allows you to chat privately and securely with anyone outside of your secure network without the need for others to download Secure. Secure Send offers you a private and secure way to email anyone outside of Secure. You won't find this level of privacy or security on any other email or instant messaging application. Visit secure.com. Regain and protect your privacy today. 
What does it mean to devote your life to the truth? Does it mean investigating communist subversion here in America? Does it mean exposing the deadly fentanyl crisis in the Midwest? Or spending late nights and covering deep government corruption? Does it mean persevering over 20 years, even after four masked men set one of our printing presses on fire last year? Because at a time when America's traditional values are under attack, it's the responsibility of righteous journalists to uphold truth and tradition. Welcome back. A beauty store brand is teaming up with a big box retailer. Target announcing is joining forces with Ulta Beauty to bring mini shops into Target locations. The shop in shop concept will be located near the existing Target Beauty section. It will feature more than 50 cosmetic brands. A joint venture called Ulta Beauty at Target launches this month at more than 100 Target stores and online at Target.com. The plans will then be expanded to a total of 800 Target locations in the future. And furniture retailer IKEA is offering a new experience for a limited set of customers. It's giving away candles that smell like the meatballs sold in IKEA food courts. Over 900 people will be selected. The meat-scented candles are meant to remind customers of being inside IKEA. It's part of the company's store-in-a-box promotion meant to give people a sensory experience from a compact box. People who want to enter IKEA sweepstakes for the special candle can enter their names starting August 6th. It's part of IKEA's 10-year celebration for its customer loyalty program in the United States. Along with the candles, the store is offering big discounts for loyalty club members on many items. It'll cost you an out-of-this-world price to stay at Disney World's new and long-awaited Star Wars Hotel. Disney revealed pricing for its Galactic Star Cruiser Hotel Wednesday. The rates vary depending on the date of your stay and extras, but the pricing model is similar to that of Disney's cruise ships. It's a set price for your stay, and admission to Disney's Hollywood Studios, food and beverages except for alcohol, are all included. A sample cabin rate for two nights... At the hotel for four people is $6,000. Disney calls it a revolutionary and immersive Star Wars experience. The hotel opens next spring. And a shop in the historic Tokyo district of Asanuka is selling mini kimonos for pets. It also has Olympic-themed clothing in honor of the Games. And there's Andrew Thomas reports. This nine-year-old poodle has been busy modeling miniature Japanese kimonos. The Poodle's owner, Yuka Ida, runs the Adachia Pet Accessory Shop. Adachia started selling clothes and accessories for dogs and cats in the 1970s. The 47-year-old designs the pet kimonos herself. We create clothes, kimonos for pets, because we want customers to feel the sense of Asakusa in Japan, and we try to design and create the pet clothes ourselves. Before the pandemic, Ida sold primarily to foreign tourists looking for souvenirs. The original pet outfit sold for around $20 to $50 each. The Tokyo Olympic Games were expected to bring masses of tourists to the city. So Adachia started preparing Olympics-themed clothes back in 2019. But the shop faced tough times as the pandemic hit, and then the games were postponed. Now, as the Olympics have begun, Ida's trying to drum up business. She's been promoting the pet kimonos on Instagram. I saw many of my Instagram followers posting photos of themselves and pets with Olympics costumes in front of the TV screens so they can still see how our goods are used there, watching the games. She posts photos of her customers' pets, as well as her own poodle, May, 
who's been modeling in exchange for treats. May herself doesn't usually enjoy wearing clothes, yeah, but she loves treats, and she knows how to get them by wearing clothes and posing for a photo, so she works like a professional. The Olympic Games will end August 8th, and the Paralympics will begin August 24th. Andrew Thomas, NTD News. One of the biggest cities in the world now boasts a bird's eye view of its Brazilian concrete jungle. Sao Paulo's tallest building now features a glass floor on its 42nd level, is putting a fear of heights to the test. It's called the Sampa Sky. The dizzying sky look will be open to the public on Sunday, but a select few were treated to a special preview at the nearly 600 foot tall building. The Sampa Sky was inspired by Chicago's Sky Deck on the 103rd floor of the Willis Tower. Puerto Rico is open for tourism again. This week, the first cruise ship visited the U.S. territory since the pandemic began. And the news anchor Thomas has the details. The Carnival Mardi Gras arrives as Puerto Rico reports an increase in virus cases blamed on the Delta variant, but also seeks to restart its tourism sector. The executive director of Puerto Rico's tourism company says that the government has taken several precautions to prevent the spread. We understand that by October we will have an itinerary quite filled with new vessels entering Puerto Rico in transit and home port. And we hope that by the beginning of next year we will recover what would be an ordinary pre-pandemic cruise activity operation. The precautions include allowing only those who are fully vaccinated to disembark. Mercado said the ship was traveling at 70% capacity, with some 4,500 people aboard, and estimates a total of 3,500 will disembark. Mercado noted that 95% of the ship's passengers are vaccinated. Children younger than 12 make up the majority of those who have not been inoculated. Uh, they have been very, very cautious about cleaning the rooms, letting anybody go in the room. Uh, it has just been a, a, a remarkable job that Carnival has done to to protect the passengers. The visit is expected to generate some $360,000. During the nine hours that the ship is docked in the historic part of Puerto Rico's capital known as Old San Juan, some 1.9 million cruise ship passengers visited Puerto Rico in 2019, a record for the island. The Carnival Mardi Gras departed Port Canaveral, Florida and visited Puerto Rico as its first stop. Andrew Thomas, NTD News. As the latest business updates for today, you can still catch Entity Evening News with Stephanie Cox at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. For Entity Business, that's all for today. Thank you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. We have a new channel. Subscribe to us on YouTube at NTD News. Get the highlights of our news broadcast and the most important headlines that we curate especially for you. Don't let YouTube decide what information you get. That's your choice. YouTube is deleting our videos and cuts you off from a source of honest reporting. Make sure you don't lose access to NTD's news content and take a quick moment to subscribe to our newsletter so no matter what happens here, you'll keep your access to a trustworthy news source.